Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. Today is October 2nd and it's the feast day of our guardian angels. We see uh, several times in scripture where God is talking about uh, an angel going before us uh, to lead us along our way. He tells us to Moses, uh, he said, Behold, I will send an angel before you that will guide you along your way. He also says, uh, we also learn from Jesus that when a little boy comes in the midst of the, or a little child comes in the midst of the apostles when Jesus is talking to them, the apostles tell the child to go away. And Jesus says, let the children come to me, for even their angels behold the face of my father. So we know, we understand that that each of us, and he says angels, not plural, not, not singular, but plural, um, are watching over us, okay? So guardian angels are real, and it's very biblical, all right? We also see Padre Pio. Uh, those of you that know who Padre Pio is, he was a Franciscan friar in Italy and, <clears throat> and priest and stigmatist and um, uh, and uh, I don't know, not visionary. I can't remember the, the name of it, but but he was very he he was uh, uh, had many gifts of the Holy Spirit. He could read your um, sins when you went into confession to help you confess everything, even if you've forgotten something that you had done. He could read your heart like Jesus could do. We see this several times throughout Scripture, where Jesus says, you know, where Jesus does something to someone who's a sinner or forgives them or does something, and then the Pharisees are thinking something bad in their hearts and Jesus calls them on it because he can read their hearts. And so it seems that uh, St. Padre Pio also had this gift in uh, of reading people's hearts. St. John Vianney also had, Vianney also had this gift as well. Um, <clears throat> but today's guardian angels, today's the feast day of the guardian angels and St. Padre Pio could see his guardian angel. Okay, Not only his guardian angel, but other people's guardian angels. Right? St. Padre Pio suffered from the stigmata, which are the wounds of Christ that were appeared on his hands and feet and in his side, and they would they would bleed all day long, all the time. They, they gave off a fragrance of roses. Okay? These are spiritual wounds of his that were given to him by God. Right? It's no coincidence that he was a Franciscan and St. Francis of Assisi was also the very first person to suffer from the stigmata, which are the wounds of Christ. So, uh, St. Padre Pio, when he was a child, his friends were asking if they were looking for a friend of his, and they were asking of theirs, and he was asking him where, where uh, he was. And so he, he said, why don't you ask your guardian angel? And they looked at each other like, what? And so he asked his guardian angel, and his angel took them to where the child, where, where the child, their boy that we're looking for was. And that's the first time he realized that he was the only one that could see the angels. Okay, so, and as he got older and he became a Franciscan and he became a priest and monk, um, uh, and he became very popular and famous uh, because of all these abilities that he had and these things that he could do, uh, there's been, there was reports of someone once, he, when he was praying the rosary, by the way, he prayed 32 rosaries a day, sometimes 34 rosaries a day. And one, at least one was for the sick. Um, and one day he was just praying. He was just praying uh, the rosary and someone, this person approached him and tried to talk with him. And he said, uh, I don't have time to talk with right now. Can't you see that I'm busy? See all these guardian angels bringing me people's prayers so I can pray for these people. So he had a line of guardian angels bringing him the prayers of the people they were watching over because he would tell people in Mass to send your guardian angel to me and, I'll, and if you can't get to Mass or if you can't talk to me, send me your guardian angel and they'll tell me what you want me to pray, ask God for you. Okay, so, and, and there's just, there was an example of this. He told someone to do this. He said, the person said, I won't be able to make it to, to Mass today, but and I wanted to talk to you, um, but I won't have a chance to. He said, send me your guardian angel. And so he did. And later on, he came and visited him, the Padre Pio, and said, the person did, the man did, came and visited Padre Pio 
And he said, did my guardian angel come and tell you uh, uh, what, I, what I said or what I was asking of you? And he said, yes. And he told him, uh, he told him exactly what he said because the guardian angel had come the day before, just like he had asked his guardian angel to bring um, this information to Padre Pio. So the guardian angels are very real. You are, uh, they are with us from the moment we are born uh, and, and onwards into uh, if we are, you know, uh, if we go into eternal life uh, through Christ, then they will be with us for eternity in heaven as well. So, uh, so the thing that's so spectacular about the guardian angels is, is that the angels, guardian angels are the largest choir of the nine choirs of angels. Think about this. All the angels were made before the earth and the universe came into existence. Before human beings, before animals, before planets, before the stars, before any of those things. God created the angels to help him to, to do his bidding, to do all the things uh, that in creating the universe and making sure everything was functioning properly, okay, throughout creation, right? And every type, every one of the nine choirs has a specific role to play, both in heaven and on earth. The guardian angels are the largest choir because every single guardian angel was created before time began, and enough were made for every person who would ever be born on earth until the until the end of the world. That's the hugest, largest choir. They are most mostly uh, interested in the affairs of man. They're mostly interested um, uh, uh, in the things that are in each per in, in individuals, right? So, and and your guardian angel was given a, an opportunity or a choice if he would take you, if he would if he would accept you as his as his uh, uh, to, to care for. Um, and of course, those who didn't fell from grace and became demons in hell. So, uh, because they saw the beatific vision and they, um, you know, denied their duties, denied what they were, what God had called them to, because they wanted to go walk their own path. Okay, <clears throat> and so that would be rebellion. Um, so, <clears throat> our guardian angels, uh, the one that's with you, chose you. Uh, um, it just as much as he was uh, given, the, as you were given to him. Something you have to understand, we can't name our guardian angels because they belong to God. Our, the guardian angels were created by God. They don't have a, a mother or, or, or dad. They don't have a mom and dad except for God or Father, right? Because they, God is their creator, all right? And so he created them, so he has the authority to name them. Because when you have someone's name, you have some type of, at least a little bit of authority over them. You can call them by name. They can, you can, they can come over to you and, and things like that. Okay. So he, just like a, a a mother and father, name their child. They give the child the name. It's God's right to name the guardian angel. So you don't want to name your guardian angels. And another misconception um, other people have about guardian angels is that they're like kind of like a pet. Like you can name it and then like. Uh, he's like he's someone there that's 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 like your your pet or beneath you. It's it's actually quite the opposite. Um, the angels are highly intelligent. Um, they can travel all over the world. Uh, different angels are meant for different tasks. Some have wings. Some don't have wings. But our guardian angels definitely do. Okay, because they are they need to go back and forth to heaven. And to back on earth to to care for you and help guide you in spiritual things and help remind you of the very important things all that kind of stuff okay and now because uh, so guardian angels our guardian angels can help communicate things to you by like images in your mind okay now of course there are demons that can also communicate you to you using bad memories old memories things that can affect you those aren't from your guardian angel. Your guardian angel is going to remind you of specific things like before you walk out of the house. Oh, shoot, I forgot this. Oh, shoot, I need this. Oh, I forgot that. He's going to remind you of those types of things. And he's going to bring that picture in your mind, okay? The thing that's uh, the reason why we can't, um, we are not, the guardian angels aren't under us is because they're far superior beings, 
they were created before we were, okay? And, and God has placed them in charge of you. And each one has been created in such a way and manner that, that it's specific to the human being that they've been appointed to to care for. Okay, so like if you're a, a carpenter, he's going to know a lot about carpentry. Uh, if you're, if, you know, depend, if you're in uh, the medical field, he's going to know a lot about healing, a lot about the body. He's going to help you with things like that, okay? So, so, um, so the guardian angels being superior to us, we in a way are, um, in a way, they're, we are kind of subservient to them because they're messengers from God to relay messages to us to try and steer us on the right path uh, towards Christ and towards the kingdom of God. So um, uh, now don't miss, give this misconception of that, that we are beneath them. We are co-servants with them. There are, we are friends. They are servants just like we are to God. Okay. So, so in a way, we are equal, but they are far superior beings than we are. Okay, they're far more intelligent, and they're far more, um, uh, uh, you know, stronger in things of, of, in the spirit world. So they can help you in that regard. Okay, um, and as you can see from the story of Padre Pio, you can ask them to go and do certain things, as far as prayers go and spiritual, you know, things like that. They can they can help in that in that sense. So our guardian angels, um, uh, you know, have been waiting for us, for you, for this time in, uh, in, the, in, you know, in the history of the world and the universe of creation, for you to be born, okay, for you to be living. For This is their mission. You are their mission. So uh, the longer um, you go without including them, the more hurt they become because um, they're they want you to love God just as much as they do. It's your duty to serve God because in the order of creation, you are meant, I mean, we should be properly ordered towards God from our, in our actions, in our thoughts, in our prayers, in our spiritual life, in our home life, and all these things. And sometimes those can be very difficult. And just because they are doesn't mean we should give up. God calls us to a life of holiness, and he gives us all the help we could possibly need to try and get there. Okay? And also, God is very merciful, God is very patient, very, very patient, and he's very, very kind. Okay, He's also just, though, so he wants you to do the right thing, because those who don't, uh, it doesn't end out too well. But he is merciful. So be honest, be have true contrition for your sins, and, and trust in God, trust in Christ, and know that God has, has a guardian angel with you to help you. So don't write things off as coincidences because God may have had your guardian angel show you something to give you a sign to try and turn you in the right direction. So be um, open-minded to the to the things of the spirit world uh, when it when it's pertaining in, in into the right direction. I mean, if you're getting a sign that hey maybe you should go into this dope house and like you know mess around with these bad guys and stuff, that's not from your guardian angel. That's from something else. God would never have you do that. But if your guardian angel is telling you, hey, there's a person over here on the street, he's homeless, you know, you should go there. Not saying that, but give you a sign to like point you in that direction and you see this person, it's possible that God is directing you to help them. Okay? Those kinds of things, all right? Maybe you forgot that you needed to turn in a homework assignment. Perhaps your guardian angel is going to remind you of that, all right? So you always want to keep in mind that this is all for God's will God's glory okay all for God's glory because it's only going to benefit you you start walking the, the the path where it's all you you're in control you want to do what you want to do and all that stuff it doesn't end too well the, the devil believed that it was better off if he did what he wanted to make himself be like God making his own decisions and knowing good and evil and all that stuff and he convinced Adam and Eve to do the same well he convinced Eve that she would do the same thing with the very same uh, temptation that if you eat of the fruit in the Garden of Eden you will become like God knowing good and evil okay then you can make choices for yourself all right we trust God and we do his will because we know his will is what's best for us 
and his will is will, is what will transform your life and will tran and, and will help you transform the lives of others around you for his glory and in his name because he has taken you from a place that has been so terrible so bad in your life and given you so many good things and so many amazing things and and blessed you and and blessings continue to come because he loves to bless us he loves to bless us within the right context things have to be done um, appropriately so you're not overly um, concerned about material possessions and money and pleasure and all these other things be more focused on him because all those other things are good and he's created them in the right measure so I'm, I'm gonna let you go there uh, I know I haven't been on this for a while I'm taking a bunch of school right now so I'm trying to work really hard um, uh, on that and I wanted you to 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 think about your guardian angel today if you can get to mass tonight um, a lot of times there will be a, a Saturday night visual around uh, 6 or 7 o'clock. It's also the first uh, Saturday of the month. So um, for the those who are true to the uh, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary from Fatima, uh, the Fatima devotion, uh, that's also today. So those who receive Holy Communion go to confession and um, um, uh, pray the rosary at least once can help remove a, a, a thorn from her heart from all of her children who uh, deny her and uh, even teach their children not to love her. So um, uh, so be aware that that devotion is up today too. So go and go receive Holy Communion today uh, in honor of your guardian angel for all the help that he's given you in your life and uh, praise God for him and, and thank God that, that, that you get, um, that, that God has appointed a spiritual creature over you to help you in your life. Thanks again for watching the Upper Room. Please subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out uh, all of my Christian apparel at mygleam.com.co. You can check out all of my Christian shirts and Christian um, uh, hoodies and sweaters and all that stuff there. We just started making uh, uh, printing uh, all of our prints on uh, Champion uh, sweatshirts. So now we have Champion products. You can check those out there. And in addition to that, um, uh, please check me out on Facebook at Welcome to the Upper Room and on Instagram at Welcome to the Upper Room or at my underscore gleam. See you again next week. Talk to you soon. God bless.